You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Howdy do, buckaroos, and welcome to Comics with My Kids podcast, the official podcast for the comics corner box blogspot.com. I'm your host, Matt D, and with me today is Melody D. Today, we have an advanced review for a new graphic novel with a classic twist. Yep, we are resu- reviewing a choose your own adventure forecast, or choose your own adventure called Forecast from Stonehenge, graphic novel by Tiffany Phillips. Davy Bolhol and P.H. Gnomes. <laughs> Gomes. Gomes. It's uh, Danny Bolino. And, Bolino Ho. Yeah. <laughs> P.H. Gomes. And P.H. Holmes. Gomes. Gomes. It due to hit shelves in April 2024. What? Yep. Like I said, it's, an, I know that. it's an advanced review. Anyways. Are you familiar with the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Yes. In fact, I have seven. So what is so interesting about a choose-your-own-adventure book? Can you tell our listeners a little bit about what, what they are? So um, when you're reading this, it tends to tell you at the bottom of the page, you could say, go on to the next page, turn to page 5, turn to page 20. And then when you get to that page, there might be an option. Like if you choose to go someplace magical, then you turn to a specific page. Whereas if you choose to stay where you're at, then you... St- Go to the next page. Nice. What's so special about this book versus the other Choose Your Own Fate books? It's adventure, it's not fate. Sorry, Choose Your Own Adventure. My bad. But back in the 80s, they called them Choose Your, choose your Own Fate. Now they're Choose Your Own Adventure. Okay. So what's so different? What's so special about this particular one a versus novel. a graphic novel? Yep. So what does that tell you? What is it? What what that since it's a graphic novel, what do we know about that then? It had at least a hundred more pages. <laughs> well, that and it's 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 an art in it. It's it's more like a comic book, which is I think is really cool because there really haven't been a whole lot of choose your own adventure comic books. So this is like the first one we've come across. Mm-hmm. And this one is magical. Yep. So Ish. before we dive into the story, you know, you've obviously read this particular story before because you do have the actual novel of uh, forecast from Stonehenge. What did you think of the artwork in this particular book? I thought it was cool. It definitely reminds me of a comic book like other books I read. When you read the regular book and then you read this book, the artwork inside of this book, did it kind of help the story or did you notice anything different about it? Um, It didn't really um, add anything to the story except um, there is one other ending, though. Because in my book, it has 16 endings. This one has 17. So oh, there's okay. one more ending to it. Oh, neat. Now, I don't know which one it is yet because I haven't read through the entire thing. Right. Because there's a lot of endings. There's 17. So I- That's one more than the, than the other book? What's but, 17 times 2? Uh, well, you know math. Isn't it uh, 34? So there is 34 options in the entire book. And only 17 of those options are... Uh, or lead you to an ending. Okay. Well, since the plot of your Choose Your Own Adventure book changes with each choice you make, why don't you give us the plot up to the very first choice? So you just came back from Greece. and I did? I didn't know that I went to Greece. You're the character now. So congrats, (laughs) you went to Greece and now you come back. (laughs) Gotcha. Right, because each book starts off, it starts off, Referring to the reader as the main character. Yep. All right. So, which is pretty cool about these books. Yeah. So then, um, you get a call from your friend named Twig, and he tells you to go to Stonehenge to retrieve something from a person named All Star Shepherd. No. Oh, and who is this All Star Shepherd? Um, he's a person that has or says to have information on, um, Stonehenge and. Twig wants to find out what that information is. Interesting. So you show up to Stonehenge, and what's going on at Stonehenge? There's a ton of people dressed in costumes on the summer solstice. Ah. I forgot to mention that almost all the Choose Your Own Adventure books 
happen on the summer solstice. Interesting. Six out of seven of my books start on the summer solstice. Interesting. I wonder if that's a recurring theme through the entire series then. Because, mm-hmm. um, which I do want to podcast on the other books as well. Um, there are many books, like if you were to read about Greek, God, Greek gods, mm-hmm. most things happen for that are on the summer solstice. So I think that was one of the first books from this series of okay. books. And then they used that and they used that same event to make other things happen. Interesting. Except for that seventh one that's by a different person, so it doesn't help in all solstice. Gotcha. Okay. Which, if you don't know what solstice is, it is the longest day of the year. Well, it's 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 where the break in the seasons occur. So the summer solstice is the, it's the longest day of the year. It's also the first day of summer, if I remember is. right. Yeah. Isn't that when you turn the clock back? <laughs> no, that's daylight savings time. So... All right. Well, what else can you tell me about this particular story? So where do we go from, from here? How do we get, get into Stonehenge? Because isn't something, something occurring right now at the Stonehenge? Yep. So when the sun sets on the summer solstice, it goes, beta- it goes between the two biggest pillars. But everyone wants to know what this means. Why does it go between those two? How are they perfectly put there? So when you get up to the, um, yeah. First question. When you get up to the first question, you um meet a girl dressed up as a fairy. And she has three other people with her. And she um asks you if you would like to use her secret passage to get into Stonehenge. I see. And so then what what's our first choice? So the first choice is to stay outside and keep looking for our star by the gates, or you could um take Elaine's offer and go into the tunnel. Gotcha. So now this is a pivotal point because this kind of helps dictate the, the, the next part of our plot. Yep, we um, could say a little bit of both. True. So then what happens what happens when we take the choice of following the fairy, dressed, the people dressed up like fairies. They take us to a tunnel, and um, it leads to a place, like they said, but it's not Stonehenge. Though. It's a place full of fairies. I see. And um, these people that are dressed up as fairies are real fairies. Interesting. So... Oh, We've now way. been kidnapped by fae, by the Fae, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what happens if we don't go? If we do not go, mm-hmm. then um, the fairies leave, and the guy All Star finds true. you after um, you're looking for him, and he gives you a box. He tells you to put it in your backpack and run from Stonehenge. And then when you stop at a hotel, you open the box. Actually, you're at an inn. You open the box to see that there's something inside of it. Okay. It's um something that's ha- that's colored gold, but I'm not going to say what it is. Because if you don't know what it is, then it makes you want to read the book. And that's the <laughs> point of this. Good point, read yes. Read the book. You don't wanna, yeah, you want to, yeah, we want people to read this book. So, yeah. But the one thing is, when you find this, you have an option. You can take a picture of what this is or wait until morning to take a better picture. Okay. Well, it's interesting that we have either of these two choices at the at the stone at Stonehenge. It's not a Stonehenge. No, no, no. I'm talking about earlier because this is the second option that we, we could take. So... I don't want to get too far into it because, like I said, the the plot does change throughout it. But we want to we want people to be able to experience all of the choices themselves. Yep. So, um, reading this book, reading this book though, you, you run into several different characters. Um, I know typically we I ask you what's your favorite character. I think that could still stand. Is there any particular character in the book besides you, the main character that you've enjoyed? The fairies. The fairies. I love fairies in general. But I also like pixies. And if you do get confused on this book with um, out reading it and you're just listening to this podcast, then um, you should understand the fact that 
Fairies are tall and like humans, but have pointed, really pointed ears. Okay. And pixies are super tiny. They're like three inches tall. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So don't get confused on that because you're not looking at this itty bitty thing when you're talking to see if you're going to tell You're looking at someone in your height. Okay. Well, was there anything memorable about this particular book that you you like? Um, Something that, that really... a lot of things happen on the summer solstice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Uh, would you recommend people to read this on the summer solstice? Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think it'd be kind of fun too. Just I don't know that there's a real place <laughs> that's Stonehenge. So don't oh no, there really is a Stonehenge. Maybe. Yeah, it's over in England. It's in Gloucester. So I'll have to find some books on it. I doubt someone's going to take this book, go <laughs> all the way over there, just for the summer solstice, read it, and then do it. Nice. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um, is there? Well, I don't know if I could. I, I don't think there's really anything that you could change in the book. Because I mean, you're making your own choices throughout the book. Um, but I mean, if you could change it, then um, you could say like, if there was an ending that you didn't like, you could change that ending. True. Yeah, because you can always go back and and yeah. move things around. Um, so. So yeah. Well, let's yeah. go down to this then. Yeah, um, since this is an, a, an advanced copy, and uh, we really want people to pick this book up, and I know you really enjoy these Choose Your Own Fate books, why should someone buy this version of the book versus the um, the actual novel? Because it has pictures in it for one, so it's going to be a little more interesting to have a visual of it. Okay. And two, this one has more reading, so it gives you more fun details. Okay. And I would say those details are very interesting to me because me personally, if I didn't have the view, I wouldn't get all the details. Okay. And reading the story definitely gives me more details. Nice. Well, like I guess I really, I really like the the artwork in there too. It kind of helped tell the story. It helps, you know, maybe it it describe it shows more of the descriptions of what the the novel is versus the. Uh, for the story so um what would you say attracted you most about this particular book Mm, the fact that i have a smaller version of the book okay but at first i didn't get that book like because i was interested in it i just got it as like a birthday present Mm -hmm. so after reading it i really liked this book and that's when you found this one so i was very happy to read this Okay. Is this would you say this is a book that you would definitely go back and read over and over again? Um yeah, probably a couple times I would go for the different endings. Okay. Although one thing is for sure, I would probably read it quite a few times just to get all seventeen different endings. Gotcha. Well then I would definitely I would also definitely recommend buying this book when it comes out in April. Um it is definitely something that you could have fun reading in a group of people. You know, you pick your own pick your own fate and choose your own fate. For, for uh for your Adventure. different story. Yeah, I know, I know. So I think that's all that I th- think that's all we have time for for this particular book. Is there anything else you want to add? Um probably not. Okay. So, yeah. Alright, well then we'll go ahead and park this bus and call it an episode. Well, folks, thanks for listening to this episode of the Comics My Kids podcast. Check out more episodes at thecomicscornerbox.blogspot.com. Leave us a rating or a view at Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Follow us on Twitter for all of our episode posts and and news at Comics With Kids. Also check out our Facebook page, Comics With My Kids, and Instagram. Thanks for listening and have a great night. Or morning, or breakfast, or tea time, or lunch, or snack time, or supper, or dinner, or whenever you're listening to this. Because <laughs> I can't think of it. Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. All he wants to do is play Fortnite.